Well, hello YouTube world. Nice of you to uh, join us today. Um, I'm Miss Patty from Four Year CNA, and today is our weekly live question and answer session on YouTube. So we're going to give everybody just a few minutes to get into the chat room. If you're joining us, make sure that you um, put your questions in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them. So let me just pull the chat up here and we will get started. Okay, so I'm just going to type this into the chat. All right. Hi, Joanne. Nice of you to join us today. I'm super excited to see you. Um, so you'll have to kind of bear with me. I rearranged my office a little bit, and now my chat is over here, so I have to look away from the camera for a few minutes to see my chat. Uh, give me just a second here. Uh, Blanco7 passed your CNA exam. How exciting. Uh, congratulations and welcome to the wonderful world of healthcare. We're super excited to welcome you into the industry. Uh, Catherine says, hi. Hi, Catherine. Good to see you. So happy you were able to join us. And um, Rodriguez, Rodriguez, uh, I lose my skill of hand washing. Oh, did you um, fail hand washing? Is that what you're saying? If so, I'm so sorry. So what they're looking for for hand washing is to make sure that you're rubbing for at least 20 seconds and you have to use a clock to time it. Don't sing a song or count in your head. You actually have to use a clock and then make sure that you don't recontaminate your hands after you've washed them. So head over and watch my video and it'll show you how to do that to make sure it complies with the state testing regulations. Uh, uh, Flonies, Marty says, hi, hi, thanks for joining us. So happy to have you. Bill Kiss, hello, hi, thanks for joining. And Antoinette Miller says, first time joining. Oh, we're so happy to have you. We do this every Thursday at three right here. And uh, we love to have people join us and ask questions or just let us know that you're testing. Or if you pass the test, we'd love to send you a congratulations. Um, so I have, um, real quick before we get started, I just have a little mini lesson here that I want to give because this is a question that came up earlier today as I was talking to somebody and I want to take some time to share this information with you guys as well, because you might find it helpful if you're getting ready to take the test. Now, a lot of the questions that I answer in here are geared toward the skills test because that really is kind of the the scariest part, right? You have to demonstrate in front of an RN that you know how to do the skills and they're checking off this checklist and it can be super scary. And we spend a lot of time focusing on the skills in my videos and my lectures, um, in my classroom training and also on the question and answer session. But I wanna take a few minutes and talk about the written test because it does tend to get a little bit overlooked. Um, as we concentrate on the skills. So let me real quick tell you three things that you have to remember to pass the written test on the state exam, and then we'll get into your questions today, okay? So the first thing that you need to remember when you're getting ready to take the written test for Prometric is you're gonna get a question and then you're gonna get four answers. You usually can toss two of the answers out right away. They, you know that they're not the right ones. And then you're left with two and, and they both sound like they could be the right answer. And it's like, oh my gosh, you're so close. I'm not real sure which is you know, the right one. And it can be really hard to kind of differentiate between the two. So there's three things I want you to remember when you're trying to make that decision. The first thing is that CNAs never, ever, ever treat adults like children. So if the answer is to restrict their activity, to send them to their room, to make them say please or thank you, to um, discipline them in any way. Those are not the right answers, period. End of discussion. If it's something you would do to a child, you cannot do it to an adult. Remember that adults have the right to be adults. No matter what their age, they are adults. So you can't send somebody to their room because that's, that's more disciplinary and that's not really our role, okay? So be careful. 
watch for those because there will be a few of them on the state exam trying to trick you and get you to treat an adult like a kid. That's not the right answer. The second thing is you need to know your role. And this trips up students all over the place. Remember that CNAs at its most fundamental level, a CNA is an assistant. You're there to help, to assist. You are not allowed to make any decisions. So if the question is asking you to change the care plan, to make a decision, to um, not follow the care plan, um, to decide on care, to decide what the patient needs, to come up with stuff on your own, those will never, ever, ever be the right answers because that's not your role. So you have to know your role as an assistant. There is no critical thinking here where you have to think about all the different parameters, put them together, figure out how it affects the patient and make a decision from there. That is not the role of a CNA ever. What your role is, is to follow the care plan, assist the patient with the tasks they need to do, and to report anything that you see, hear, smell, or feel to the nurse. So I hope that that kind of helps know your role. You also need to know your scope of practice. What are things you're allowed to do and not allowed to do? So the short version of that, the only things you're allowed to do are those things you've been trained to do. So keep that in mind. The third thing is that you need to know patient rights, infection control, and safety like your life depends on it, because those are the things that really will impact the patient, right? So if you always have that patient in the back of your mind, take you out of it for a minute, think about that patient. If the question is asking you, know, you a question um, about what you would do to this patient, I want you to, to kind of mentally put your grandma in that, that's, that patient role. What is something that you would want done to your grandma? So always keep the patient kind of in the middle of the question, but no infection control, patient rights, and safety. Those three topics comprise a huge part of this, the written part of the state exam. So you need to know those three things pretty much backward and forward. So no fire safety, um, know what to do if a patient falls, know what to do if you um, have a patient that's having a seizure or stroke symptoms or something like that. No safety. That's going to be a big part of the state exam. So if you keep those three things in mind, okay, so the first thing is don't treat adults like children. The second thing is to know your role. And the third thing is to understand infection control, patient rights, and safety. If you can master that, the written test is going to be super easy for you. Take a breath. Eliminate the two answers that you know aren't right, get down to the last two, and then think about those three things when you're trying to make your decision on which one is correct. So let me get to your um, questions today. So let me see here. Um, Legia, I'm hoping I say that right, um, says, how many hours is the skills exam? Well, when you get your care plan, so let me grab this. This is your care plan set. This is what you would get on the state exam. So it's going to have three different skills for you to um, demonstrate to the evaluator. They're going to tell you how much time you have to do those three skills. So for instance, this particular skill set, you would have 31 minutes to do this. So they'll tell you you have 31 minutes to do this skill. So when you're all done, your partner is going to get their skill set. They're going to get their time to do it. And you have to do this through four sets of two people. So you and your partner are going to test. Two other people are going to test. Two other people are going to test. Two other people are going to test. So all together, that's going to take roughly about four hours. Um, that's just for the skills. And then you have to take the written test. So you can kind of plan on testing day to be there somewhere around six hours in general. Um, it might be a little bit less than that if everybody's moving along at a good pace. It might be a little bit more than that if people are a little bit slower to test, if they're having technical difficulties in any way. Um, so they do adjust, but you can kind of plan on about six hours. Um, but for your particular skill set, 
it should be somewhere between 31 and 38 minutes, roughly. There are some um, differences there, but they're going to tell you how much time you have for your particular skill set. And they'll tell you when you have uh, five minutes left. So they give you a five minute warning. So you can kind of get into hyperspeed to get all of those things checked off. So I hope that helps, Legia. Colette says, thank you. I passed my CNA because of your teaching. Congratulations. That is awesome. Uh, Stephanie says, good afternoon, Nurse Patty. I passed with flying colors. Great job. We're so proud of you. Welcome to healthcare. Um, let's see here. Uh, Antoinette says, nice to be here. Well, we do welcome you, Antoinette. And I know you're a first time uh, joiner. So please feel free to join us again. I love to, um, to be able to connect with the students that are using our resources. So let's see here. Stephanie says, my three skills uh, time was 42 minutes. And when you were done, you had 15 minutes left. Yeah, they give you way more time than you need to do the skills. So don't rush. You got all the time you need. you got, you know, don't rush. But yeah, you'll, you'll be able to get it done. As long as you have a general vague idea of how to do these skills and you're following the principles that I put out in my videos and, and in the instruction, you'll be fine on time. Um, so Colette asked, do you have anything for phlebotomy? Actually, I do, but not as much as you would think. Um, we actually taught phlebotomy for a while and I created a whole bunch of resources for phlebotomy similar to what I have for CNA. And I do have some of them up on my channel in a playlist. It's called the phlebotomy playlist. Not all of the resources are there. Not all of the slide presentations are there. It's something I'm going to be working on in the near future to get them integrated into the channel just for people that are adding phlebotomy to their skill set to have that resource to be able to refer back to. I do have some slides up there, um, and it's kind of the, the hard things that people have a hard time getting to the bottom of. So you might want to check those out. Hope they help. Uh, Stephanie says, I passed May 7th. Oh, just a week ago. Congratulations. Um, I'm super excited for you. I got a whole list of people here to congratulate too. Uh, in Florida, Stephanie was in Florida. Well, I'm, that's where I'm at in Florida. It's hot here now. Um, so we need all the CNAs we can get in Florida. We are so short staffed. It's not funny. I just talked to another employer today that called me begging to be able to come into our classroom and recruit students directly from our classroom. And like I told her, there's so much competition. I've got 40 employers in the area that all want the students right out of my classroom. If I let them all in, I'd have no time for instruction. There is a huge shortage. So you guys are well, um, well needed out there. Make sure that you get your certification and get to work because we've got a lot of patients that need to be taken care of. So um, let's see here. Uh, Jennifer asked, Patty, can you show me the CNA book? I sure can. This is the CNA book. So I know that my um, camera's flipped, so bear with me here. But this is CNA Skills um, Study Guide. This is what you want. This is going to lead you through from beginning to end. All of the skills, all the theory, all the principles you need. Do the activities in this book. It does help tremendously. Go to my website, foryourcna.com, click on shop, and you can purchase it right online. Um, let's see here. Stephanie says, just got home from my interview. Awesome. I hope that you nailed it. We're going to keep our fingers crossed because we need you. Uh, Emma says, hello, Miss Patty. Aw. I was able to call the nursing department for my license renewal, the lady told me since it was my first time, it was okay, but for the second time, to be sure to complete the hours first. All right. I remember us talking about that. You renewed before you did your in-services, so I'm glad you were able to, um, to get that taken care of. I see that you completed your hours. And guys, stay tuned because we actually are going to be putting in-services up on our uh, courses at some point in the near future. And I'm going to make the in-services super easy to go through. They're going to be more scenario-based or just not a whole bunch of like boring reading that you have to do. It's going to be a little bit more interactive and fun. So stay tuned because within the next year, we should have our in-service department up and running. And that's a project I'm working on. I'm super excited about. Um, so let's see here. Uh, e. Katrina says, I just gradu got, I got graduated last week, still waiting on my state test to be scheduled in the state of Texas. We have issues with it. Yeah, Prometric has issues, period. Um, every state is struggling with Prometric right now. And um, COVID really, you know, kind of um, 
upset the apple cart quite a bit. But Texas is having very specific issues because right in the middle of COVID is when Texas switched from Pearson View to Prometric. And that changes everything. All of the test sites have to be, um, they have to apply to be a, if they were a test site with Pearson, they don't automatically transfer over. They have to apply to be a test site. They have to go through the approval process. Um, evaluators have to be hired because they don't use the same evaluators. It's not a seamless transition. So when Prometric took over, they had to start from scratch. And it takes a little bit of time to build up this uh, whole system in a state as big as Texas. So bear with them. They are starting to get through it a little bit better. Um, and unfortunately, I, I wish I could say Prometric was an easy company to deal with on a good day, but they do have their issues. It's a really big company and, and you know, with big companies come big issues. So um, just stay tuned. You'll get your test date. In the meantime, watch the videos over and over and you'll uh, you make sure that you're practicing and you'll be fine. You're not going to forget what you learned as long as you're reviewing along the way. So... Um, Let's see here. Stephanie says, uh, I was at the testing site at 8 a.m. and left at 3. So there you go. About, you know, right around six, seven hours, somewhere in there. Vilka says, do you know which documents we should send to the CDPH after finishing the course? I live in California. OK, Vilka, so California is a little bit different. They don't go with Prometric. So but either way, I, the process is the same. So let me explain. For you guys that have to, now I'm not talking about Florida. So all my Florida people, close your ears. This doesn't apply to you. So all the other people, all the other states, okay, when you are ready to test, when you graduated from your program, your um, training center, your school, wherever you went, they have to submit paperwork to the testing agency on your behalf. So they're going to tell the testing agency, who was in the class, who completed it, who's eligible to test and all of that. So they have to send that information first. And then once they do that, they're going to either give you the applications and you guys all fill them out together. They collect them and send them off as a group, which is the best way to do it. Or they will give you the information to register independently. And once the, the Board of Health has received your um your school's list of approved candidates, that's when they will be able to um, process your application. So the short answer here, I wish I could help you, but the short answer here is you have to go back to your training center and find out where in the process they are and what you need to do to be able to register for the test. So it's going to be uh, different for each training center. So I hope that helps go back to your school and don't take no for an answer. Make sure that when you leave, you have a clear, defined pathway, steps that you have to take. Okay. And then come back and let me know what, how it goes. Um, so let's see here. Um, Colette says, thank you. Missy, hi. Hi, Missy. Thanks for joining us. On hand placement for ROM leg, is the hand supposed to be placed directly under the knee or a bit further down? I feel like directly under the knee would crush the hand when uh, the leg bends. Okay, so great question. Short answer, doesn't matter. Um, you want to support the leg. That's the big thing here. And remember that we aren't the claw machine at Walmart, right? You know, the, the machine that comes down and picks up the toys, right? We, we aren't a claw machine. So when we are lifting any extremity, we always do it from below with a flat palm. So we don't want to injure the patient. That's the really big thing here is we don't want to hurt. We want to help. So we're going to lift that leg from below with a flat palm. So it really doesn't much matter where you get that hand at, you know, as to is it directly under the knee? Is it a little off of that? It doesn't matter. It's whatever's comfortable for you, whatever allows you to get that leverage to get that good stretch in there. Uh, me personally, I am just probably this much from the back of the knee, okay? So enough to give good support, but not so much that my hand is in the crease of the knee when it bends. So I hope that helps. But for the test, they're not grading that technically. They're not going to see exactly, okay, wait a minute, her hand is in the crease. That's not what they're looking at. They're looking at, did you provide the support necessary when you lifted the leg 
so that it's not just kind of flapping in the breeze, right? Because we don't want to hurt the patient. So I hope that helps, Missy. E. Katerina says, uh, they said the problem is in their system, why they wouldn't set, set up dates as they did in the old days by mail. Uh, good luck. Um, I wish I had a clear answer for you. I really do. But I would go back to the school and just, you know, whatever their issue is, you need to find out when do they plan on having it resolved. You need to just kind of stick around until you get some firm answers. Um, sometimes with schools, you have to be a little bit forceful, I guess is the right word, because they don't have a lot of um, motivation to get you tested. So you're going to have to kind of take that responsibility on yourself and make sure that you um, kind of push them where you need to to get the answers that you need. Unfortunately, I have no contacts there, so there's nothing I can do to really kind of help you speed this along. Um, but uh, if you still have problems, let us know and uh, we can tell everybody else to avoid that school. Um, OK, because they're not supporting their students. All right. So. Uh, e. Katerina says, simple to say, they, had, they are unable to send students emails to schedule the exam. And I'm moving the end of May. Oh, my gosh, that's so scary. Um, yeah, I'd be knocking on their door for sure. You also might. OK, so two things I would recommend. Let me, let me back up here real quick. Two things I would recommend for you. If you're having trouble at the school level, there's, there's two other ways that you can go about this. The first is I would contact the Board of Nursing in California and say, hey, listen, I gave these people my money. I went through their training. I completed all the requirements and they're dragging their feet. And I've got some personal issues I need to test because I'm not going to, you know, I, I'm leaving here very shortly. So I would contact the board of nursing in your area and file a complaint against the school. Um, a lot of schools are licensed by the board of education too. And that might be another role. If you go above the school to file a complaint, usually something gets done. The second thing I would do is contact Pearson View directly. Their phone number is on the website. Just type in, go into any search engine, type in California CNA exam Pearson, because California's test is test with Pearson. And um, you will find their, you know, their whole website for California. Their phone number is on there. And you can contact them directly and say, hey, wait, what do I do here? Because the school is really dragging their feet. So um, you can hold them accountable that way, too. So those are the two things that I would do if I were in your position. You might get somewhere with that. OK, so Emma says, Miss Patty, I'm trying to apply for travel CNA. If they need CNA so much, why do they require one to two years experience as a CNA first? Can you provide some insight into this? Chat? Yes, I actually can talk about this. OK, so here it is. Being a brand new CNA is tough. I mean, it's hard, right? You're, you're not good at your skills yet. You're still super slow. You still need some help. And, and that's normal. I mean, everybody was new at one point, right? Think about being the new job or the new guy at any job, right? You're, you're slow. That's, that's normal. It's to be expected. But the problem is that um, when you are new, there's a whole lot going on. You're learning the skills, you're learning the patients, you're learning the routines, you have to learn the facilities, and there's a lot of newness there. Um, and, you know, we kind of cut you some slack because you're new. It's okay. Now, when you're doing travel CNA, everything changes, right? So if you're assigned, let's say that, that you get um, hired as a travel CNA and you get sent to Tennessee. So they need you on the ground able to perform up and running, no problem, because it's a new facility, right? New facility to you. So they don't want all the newness, <laughs> you know, new skills, new routine, new facility. They need to just be able to get you trained at that facility and you are off and running. So that's why they need that year or two of experience before you get into traveling, because traveling has its own set of challenges. OK, um, traveling is not easy. It pays well, yes, but it's not easy. A lot of places when they hire travelers, the people that are already there, the, the, the normal day to day employees, they don't like travel individuals and they tend not to help you. 
And that's because they know you're getting paid more to do the same job that they're doing. So there's, there's some animosity there. There's some inequality. So when you're working as a travel CNA or travel nurse or whatever, that team atmosphere often does not extend to you. And in a lot of cases, it's sad. It, it really shouldn't be that way because our focus should always be on the patients. And I think that, you know, the staff that, that is entrenched there, that the normal daily staff that's there should help travelers because if it wasn't for the traveler being there, they would be short staffed and it would be way harder on them. But they don't think about that. They don't think you know, what if you weren't there? They just look at you're getting paid more and I don't like you because of it. <laughs> so if you're, you know, if you're traveling, um, you know, you're away from home. We have to figure out your housing. You've got to learn your way around a new town. You've got a new facility. And then you've got all these other personal stressors within the workplace, which um, can be a little bit difficult as well. So we don't want you new while you're trying to navigate all of that. I hope that helped. I really hope. Um, okay, so let's see here. Vilka says, thanks. Thank you, Missy says, thank you. So Ekaterina says, so a question, Miss Patty. If I move in another state without my exam, what awaits for me then? Okay, well, uh, there's a couple things. Okay, so the first is, what state are you planning on moving to? Um, the second is, are you going to have the ability to go back to California to test? And the third is, what requirements of the new state is there for you to transfer your certification? So three big questions here. Okay, it's not as simple as just yes or no. Three big questions here. So the first question is, um, what state are you planning on moving to? So, um, you know, and, and when are you moving? So, so that's kind of, you kind of have to figure that part out. But if you're moving close to California and you can drive back for the test, that would probably be your ideal situation. But just because you have a certification in California doesn't necessarily mean that the state you're going to be going to is going to allow you to transfer it. That's something called reciprocity. And I know it's a big word reciprocity. But what that means is they give you a certification in their state based on the fact that you got one over here. And not all states participate in this. So like some states are like, okay, yeah, we'll take a certification from that state, that state, and that state, but the rest of you are out. So in order for you to, to understand this, you have to go to the board of nursing in the state that you're moving to. So I don't know where you're moving. I'm just going to give you a scenario. Let's say that you're in California and you're moving to Arizona. You need to contact the Board of Nursing in Arizona and you need to ask them two things. First, do you accept certifications from California? Can I train, if I get my license in Cal or my certification in California, can I transfer it to Arizona? The second question is, if not, what it, or, or regardless, what are the requirements for me to get my certification in Arizona if I were to start from scratch? So if I prove that I've taken a program would I be eligible to test here? So th there's a lot of things to consider. Now, if you're moving to Florida, it's super easy because Florida doesn't require anything from anyone. You can go challenge the state exam, just apply for it, challenge. And if you pass it, you're a CNA. You don't have to go through a training program. You don't have to prove anything. You just challenge the test. But Florida is the only state that lets you do that. So if you're moving anywhere else other than Florida, you need to contact the Board of Nursing of the state that you're going to to find this information out. Now, if they allow, so let me go back to Arizona real quick. If you call up Arizona, hey, Arizona, I want to come to your state. Do you allow me to bring in a California certification? If they say, yeah, no problem, as long as you're certified somewhere else, we'll give you one here, then it might be worth it to you to go back to California if you have the ability to test there and then just transfer your certification to the new state. I hope that helped. I know it's complex. I could do a whole hour long thing on this. So that's kind of the short version, but I hope it helped you. Okay, so uh, Key Love says, hello, Miss Patty, hi. I failed the skills test yesterday. Oh no, oh, that's awful, I'm so sorry. 
She said, I did everything else right except for providing support to the neck of the resident while making an occupied bed. Any tips? That's kind of strange. I mean, that, that you know, that certainly is important, right? We, we have to um, think about things from the patient's point of view. And remember that during the test, your focus should always be on the patient, not you. So I can understand why that would be a concern. Okay. So, you know, supporting the head. I can understand why that would be a concern, but that alone shouldn't fail you. It's not a critical safety stop. So it sounds to me like maybe possibly you missed a few other things along the way um, that she really didn't tell you about. So I would look at the printout that you're given and kind of go through it because it should print out all of the steps that you missed. And I would look a little bit, um, I, I would look critically at that just to see what all you missed. Um, but it sounds to me like you probably had a few other things that maybe you're just not aware of. Although that is an important step, it shouldn't be a critical fail option. I hope that helps. Um, but so my tip would be make sure that you're supporting the head. <laughs> uh, so Mary says, hi, Mary. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, Miss Patty. Let's say I pass the skills. OK, that sounds good. <laughs> but I fail the written. Oh, we don't want you to do that. Do I need to start over and pay full price again? No, you don't. Um, you are only going to pay to retake the part that you failed. So if you've passed the skills and you failed the written, you would only pay to retake the written part of the exam. So it's not the full price. It'll be a reduced rate. And in most states, you have to wait 30 days to be able to retest. Okay. And oh, thank you, Ekaterina. I do appreciate that. You guys are awesome, too. This is the best part of my week. I love doing this. So, um, I, Emma, I'm glad that helped you. So, Patricia. Oh, I like you, Patricia. We share a name. Afternoon. I'm a patient care assistant here in Jamaica. Oh, I've been to Jamaica. It's beautiful there. Is there an online CNA course I can do? So yes and no. So yes, there is an online course. Um, we have one and it shows you everything you need to know. The problem is that it's not, um, it doesn't meet state requirements. So it's not licensed in every state to meet their eligibility requirements for tests. And it also isn't licensed internationally. So we have a course, yes, but it won't meet your needs for testing in Jamaica. Um, so kind of good news, bad news. Now, if you flew to Florida and you took the test in Florida, you know, you took the online course and you tested in Florida, it would meet the requirements. Um, but then you'd have to look at how do you transfer a Florida CNA certification to Jamaica. And I wouldn't even know where to start with that. I have not dealt with any international um, transferring of certificates. So I don't even know if it's possible. Um, so I would really kind of check into you know, getting uh, getting into a program in Jamaica because I, I truthfully do not know what their requirements are. Um, I'm so sorry. I wish I could help you. So Emma says, Miss Patty, about the certification, some hospitals require a certified nursing or certified training, even if you challenge the test and become a CNA. At least that's how it was for me upon getting hired at Mercy Hospital. That's interesting. I wasn't aware of that. Um, that's completely that that's not a state regulation that's completely up to the employer that's an employer saying this is what we want for our employees here it's not regulated by the state that you know you're that you would have to have training um that's just something that they put in place and chances are along the way they've hired some cnas that weren't very good that challenged the test and that's why they put that policy in place so um this is why it's so important to make sure that you're performing um, professionally in every setting, because what you do is going to impact the policies of the people that come after you. 
So uh, he says, thank you, Miss Patty. Oh, you're very welcome. And Nathalie uh, Jules says, thanks with tons of happy faces. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. So let's get to the um, awesome part of today. We're going to talk about who passed the test this week and came back and let us know. So here we go. Here's our congratulations for the week. Tetiana Napara passed. Congratulations. Naoto Maria Challenge the test in Florida. Congratulations, you passed. That is awesome. Gloria Solomon Lair also passed the state exam. So congratulations. And Summer Allen, welcome to healthcare. You also passed the state exam and came by to let us know. We're super, super happy that you've done that. The rest of you that are getting ready to test, make sure you drop by and let us know. I know that Sophia Randolph is getting ready to test on June 1st. We're waiting to hear from you and let us know how you did. Um, Wanda Penny tested this week and hasn't dropped by to let us know how it went. So we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping, hoping that she's just so busy filling out applications that she hasn't had a, a chance to come back and let us know. Um, Amelia tested on, or I'm sorry, Anna, Anna Amelia V tested on Tuesday and hasn't let us know how it went. So we're hoping. And uh, Mary Dayoust and Logan Creech both tested today. So we're kind of hoping they drop by the channel after they get home and let us know that they were successful um, as they uh, took the state exam. So I hope that helped. Well, congratulations, guys. We're super excited for you as you start your new career in healthcare. And as always, if there's anything we can do to help, feel free to drop by and let us know. Join us next week at this time, 3 p.m. on Thursdays for another live question and answer session where I answer the questions that you have about CNA testing, training, certification, or anything else that you want to talk about while you're here. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And uh, feel free to uh, drop us uh, any information in the chat or through my contact form on my website, and I'll be happy to get back with you. So uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Until then, happy caregiving.